But it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? And looking at some of the, as you and I both get involved in like women in leadership events and programs, I find it disappointing when that training is around, okay, how do we give you the skills that men have? So how do we train you up to be a better negotiator, influencer, more assertive and confident? It's like, no, it's not about making women into men. It's about how do we, and it, it also isn't about necessarily embracing traditional female characteristics. It's just yeah. about who are you and, and how do we develop you to be a better version of you? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I mean, I that's also the reason behind the name of the company, not just a princess. Yeah. If you want to be a princess, you crack on. Just don't let that limit you. So, so um, what I feel is out there at the moment is very limiting, limiting girls' choices based on their gender, and it shouldn't. And, you know, you can be all those lovely feminine things as well as realising that intelligence or um, physical ability is also celebrated in women as well, rather than, oh, well, only men do that. That's not a career. That's not a career for men. And there is a lot of research out there that is showing that girls shift that viewpoint at around the age of six. Already, they start to think that boys are stronger than them um, and that they're braver and that, you know, and it's not fair on boys either. I think that's important yeah, to say. Right, yeah. You know, boys are pushed into... Um, and I get a lot of questions about this. What, what, what about not just a prince? And, you know, I, I, and I agree. You know, I think actually it's not fair. They're, they're, boys can feel too. Boys can, if they want to wear a fairy princess outfit, they should be allowed to. It's like I, the, um, um, and by the way, my nephew has, has worn many a princess outfit. That's it. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. We've got lots of photographic evidence of that. But it's like the, um, like the phrase, um, mummy's little soldier. Hmm. Yeah, that's not particularly helpful, is it? It's, it's interesting looking back to when we were kids. Mm. So I remember that, that idea of um, like strength. I, as, as a kid, I really hated the idea that boys, that I was told that boys could run faster and they were stronger. And I actually used to take on boys um, in races and arm wrestling competitions. I can, I can well imagine that, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I was a tiny little skinny thing, but I was quite good at arm wrestles and I was a good runner. But I'd hate it when I got beat because it's like, I, I don't want to, I hate the idea that I might get beat because I'm a girl. Yeah. But then, you know, looking at, I even remember at nursery school that, you know, in like in the afternoons, you get to play with the different toys. And I always wanted to play with the roadworks. Mm. And I was told you're not allowed to, because that's for the boys. When I was in secondary school, I remember asking one of our teachers if he'd coach us as a, as a football team of girls. No, sorry, I can't do that because you're girls, football, football. And it's like, now that just sounds so crazy. Yeah. But even my own mother, I remember when I um, announced that I was, I was leaving home, I was going off to the, the bright lights of Nottingham and, you know, promotion and, and all of that. And she was really upset. And she said, but Catherine, I always thought you'd just move like to the next street and have a few kids. And I was like, what gave you that idea? You know, at seven, I was writing essays about my future and that yeah. I was going to be somebody very famous indeed. <laughs> I yeah. didn't know what that meant, but... It's it's interesting how it those small it's those small things those micro messages, isn't it? You're absolutely right. Like society, unfortunately, I think we've got rid of big, uh, obvious signs of sexism. We're doing pretty well on, yeah. but it's the, you, like you say, it's the micro messages. So little things. In fact, this is a story of success that I've just literally heard of this morning. So a friend sent me or last week uh, an advert from a, a blog on Purcell's website about a little boy who had some stains on his teddies and the whole story is about his mum, his mum doing the washing, his mum doing the washing, his mum's biggest worries and actually it was fine because Purcell saved the day and I Instagrammed it and I said look hang on a second just what we're missing here is the there's a just big assumption that only women do washing this is a micro message that just is unnecessary why don't we say parents why don't we say mum and dad because by the way in my house I don't do the washing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if, if society is 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 constantly reinforcing those stereotypes, you know, it's going to be difficult to change. And that seems really, really subtle. And I'm sure there's a whole load of people that will listen to this and go, really? Fuss over nothing? You know, call me a snowflake, whatever it is. Mm. And even Purcell said, oh, we're sorry if we offended. Um, you know, we'll change it. I said, you didn't offend. I think you're just missing a point here, which is representation. And if men are never represented as doing the washing, how do you expect them to feel that that's not a weird thing for them to do as they grow up, you know? Um, and, and women then as they grow up think, oh, well, 
that society saying that I should do all the washing. It's such a small thing. But actually, the more we can focus on those messages, the more we can change things.